everybody, it's Tyler here at the FIM State Championships in Northwest. It's 10 6 4 4 Cybox. This team is the second highest OPR coming into this event at an absolutely phenomenal machine. Just watched their first match, and they're absolutely rocking it. A lot of great stuff to talk about on this robot here. I love this floating intake that they have, a very unique aspect of this robot. Uh, great turret mech, and obviously a lot of great 3D printing and aesthetic design as well, too. But let's dive into more what makes this team special coming up here on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Take on the decode season with Studica Robotics, featuring their FTC starter bot, new six millimeter hex shaft and motor options and updated bevel gears. FTC teams can receive a 25% discount and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Abby, a lot to break down on this robot here. Your spin dexter is really cool. So can you start with that and let's break down some of the other cool attributes of this robot. Yeah, so for our spin dexter, we have uh, two color sensors underneath each of the holes so that we're able to detect the motif pattern in Auton and Teleop. Um, and we're able to spin. As you can see, we're able to spin to the correct color. And we have one button presses. So uh, if there's three balls loaded inside of our robot, one button press, it shoots the first ball, rotates to the next color, shoots it, then rotates to the next, and then shoots again. This allows us to have a really good scoring efficiency in our matches. When you were originally designing this robot here, I, I, I just love your overall packaging on this machine, right? Just everything's come together so well. Is this kind of the initial design you had, or did you have some other things in mind when you were looking at this? Uh, we definitely had many different designs before this one, but this is what we have right now. Uh, we kind of talked about what we would want. Uh, we needed some sort of uh, organizer, and uh, a circular idea was what we thought would fit best inside of our robot. So. Um, and we knew we needed an intake and a shooter, of course, to score quickly. And we've had many different designs on this uh, spin dexter before we finally ended on this one. The reason we have this one black and the other green is so that uh, our color sensors wouldn't accidentally detect the green color sure, yeah. for the ball so that we could get more accurate readings. Is that something you thought of ahead of time or did you learn that the hard way? We learned that the hard way yeah, for sure. Nice. Uh, I got to talk about this intake as well, too. This, um, when we were talking earlier, it serves kind of two main purposes, right? It's not just yeah. bring it in, but also helps to get into your spin dexter. So break that down for me a bit more. Yeah, so we wanted an intake that would be able to uh, quickly intake balls, but we also knew we would need some sort of mechanism to feature the shooter. And we thought about what ways we could do that, and we thought about a flicking mechanism. But then we realized, what if we had our intake on a pivot that allowed us to use this to feed balls to the intake? As you can see, if we press the button, press the button, then it comes inwards, spins the wheels, and then feeds the ball up to our shooter so we can shoot the score. Overall with this, you obviously have a very wide intake, and I love the guides that you have as well, too. When you're looking at like overall match strategy and stuff, uh, was really just quick cycles for artifacts kind of your main goal? And then were you looking at doing anything in terms of like, uh, you know, from a motif standpoint, uh, what were some challenges with this overall setup and trying to get a motif correct? Yeah, for our match strategy, what we were thinking was if we can get the nine motif points in Auton, then for the entirety of the match, we can just cycle balls as quickly sure. as possible. But then during endgame, we tried to do one last dump and get all purples in there so we can guarantee at least uh, five motif points or six motif points. And from a, in a top sample, I know we'll be talking about some sensors later, but like I watch your guys' time. How many are you actually scoring in auto right now? Yeah, so right now we have multiple different options for our Auton so we can be compatible with our alliance partner. But the main one that we run the most is a uh, 12 ball Auton with one dump. So what we do is we shoot the three preloaded balls, we intake the first the stack, then we empty the classifier, then we shoot uh, the three balls, intake the second two stacks, and then shoot those as well. Let's go up into your shooter here and the turret that you have for it. Yep. Uh, obviously working great on the field. Uh, I love the gears and stuff that's gone into this overall, but like, can you just break it down like, you know, what has worked well for you? What challenges did you face? And, and of course the overall design, I'd love to hear more about. Yeah, definitely what has been a challenge for us was backspin on, so using a one wheel shooter obviously gives us backspin as we don't have another wheel pushing up the same amount. So what we've done to address that is we've changed compressions on this, uh, uh, the hood design. Uh, to change the um, the amount of spin that the ball gets. 
And we've also added a flywheel on the end. And this actually, uh, using the law of inertia, helps us to maintain the speed of our shooter when shooting multiple balls so that we don't have to wait uh, extra time before we can shoot the next few balls. It seemed like you just had so little downtime every time you were yeah. picking out. I, mean, I didn't even notice half the time watching your match that you even picked up artifacts yeah. and you were just cycling so quick on that. Uh, so just overall well done, I think, on that design so far. And then, you know, from a 3D printing standpoint, I mean, what type of material like went into this? And like from a design standpoint, what was it like actually to go from designing to actually printing to implementation? Yeah, so what we start out with is some sort of sketch or drawing on a whiteboard or a piece of paper. And then we take that sketch and then our CAD team will put that into CAD and then try to work on that to make it uh, look very good and work very well good. And once that's done, we have many, many of our teammates have 3D printers and we have a couple in our school. Uh, we print them out, we put them on our robot to test. And then if it works well, then we keep it and keep on iterating on that to make it even better or we find a new design and implement that into our robot to keep working on. You know what type of material material you're using for this? Uh, PLA or? PLA Plus. Oh, PLA Plus, very cool. Anything else on your robot, uh, structure-wise, mechanical-wise, you want to highlight at all? Um, I, I wouldn't say so. All right, well, let's pass over, talk more about, uh, sorry, talk more about some of the different sensors that have gone into this. So uh, walk me through just like, you know, what has gone into such accuracy that your team has so far. I mean, your cycle output is just absolutely insane. Uh, so talk to me about what are some of the keys to success from a software end there. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, so as Avi mentioned, we have color sensors below our so-called spin dexter, which is just a spinning indexer, to actually spin the balls to the right balls so we can shoot correctly. Meanwhile, we also have uh, the pinpoint sensor all the way up there and odometry pods under our bot right next to our wheels so it can track our bot during auton and teleop so we can use auto aim and auto shoot also during teleop with uh pedro passing and all these sensors i just mentioned we uh with pedro passing we can control the motor velocity and we can code our auton with command-based structure in java and we also have the limelight sensor which is right back in the bot so we can look at the April tag and score the right motifs each match without worrying about scoring the wrong motifs so our points get lower than expect expectation. A lot of great things that go on just now. And Danny, I guess you mentioned that your team is using uh, Pedro Pathing for its pathing as well too. Is this yes, the first year your team has used that or have you had experience with it prior? Uh, last year, I think we our team used Roadrunner. It's our Pedro Pathing. So what's your experience been like with Pedro Pathing here so far? It's it's kind of been hard, but we pushed through it as we, you know, really don't give up. Fair. And, yeah. Yeah, fair enough on that. I mean, overall, this is a phenomenal machine, so congratulations on a great year of what your team has had. Thanks for telling us more about this. A lot of great things teams can learn from, and we can't, of course, wait to see how you do. Maybe going for three-peat here at Fem State, so we can't wait to see how your team does. Good luck the rest of the way, guys. Thank you, sir. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Take on the decode season with Studica Robotics, featuring their FTC starter bot, new 6mm hex shaft and motor options, and updated bevel gears. FTC teams can receive a 25% discount and apply for grants at studica.com robots.